What's going on guys? If you want to be part of the intellectual property school where you make money with your mind, go below and fill out the intellectual property school app. We're doing something a little different the way that we're bringing students into the school. We're going to have a little conversation first. So if you want to be part of that, go below and hit the app and we'll see what happens in the future. So let's go ahead and get into this video. One of the things that gets me, a lot of people are curious to the mindset, to the process of starting a holding company, building out a holding company, creating some type of entity. And here's the thing. The mindset comes first. One of the things I get in training is how much of a percentage should I allocate? And when you have that certain mindset, that certain je ne sais quoi, you understand that you make up your own rules as you go. You make up your rules as you go. And one of the things that you need to understand is the mindset of a holding company hustler is radically different than the mindset of a regular person. And as we go back in time and as we look at the things that are happening, I have to look at my own journey of getting into the holding company. And this may or may not happen my first holding company situation was for a media company. And then my second holding company situation was for real estate. And then I went ahead and I leaned into my strengths because the media, the online course business, I'm pretty strong with that. And one of the things that I teach is you should lean towards your strength. You shouldn't be, once again, let me be really, really clear here. There are many different business models out there that you don't know anything about. And one of the things is you can actually go ahead and get into these business models, but you want to make sure that that business model is something that leans on one of your strengths. And this is one of the things, because, you know, I, I sat down and I really, really thought about it. And I was like, what am I good at? And as I started to go through the data and start to look at stuff, I realized that many of the things that I was really good at, I wasn't setting up my holding company situation. Like the first holding company situation was kind of like half. In the second holding company situation, let me just go ahead and say it. I am just not that excited about real estate. Is real estate a way that you can make a lot of money? Absolutely. But it's a lot of exposure. It's a lot of money. It uses your credit. But there are many people who have made a lot of money from real estate. But one of the things that I like, and let's go ahead and talk about this. Um, when you have a business that cash flows, this makes you incredibly strong and an incredibly lucrative competitor. And once you have the holding company mindset, you know when you form a holding company that you're gonna have more than one business. Now, you don't need to have like 30 businesses to have a holding company. You can have two, three, four, five, six businesses. And one of the things that you have to understand and acknowledge is with the setup of the holding company situation and with the allowance of being able to create more businesses, because this is the, the mindset of a holding company hustler is I'm going to go out and start more than one business. And that's a very different mindset. That's a very different prerogative. That's a very different way to look at it. 
because when I first started, I typically kind of going back to the storage auction days, I kind of looked at all of that as one business, uh, selling on eBay, selling on Amazon, selling on Craigslist, selling out the warehouse, but really in, you know, doing other things on Craigslist and having a new furniture website. So even though I looked at it as one business, I literally had seven businesses. When you really look at it and nail it down, it's just that all of these businesses were running from the same LLC. And because when I started selling sleigh beds on Craigslist, that added like $15,000 to the bottom line, $185,000 a year. And that was just, that literally took me maybe three, four hours a week, if that. And I started to look at this, and this is one of the good things that is happening for me. The longer that I stay in business, the wiser that I get, the more things that I know that I can do. And this, let, this third, third holding company is going to embrace a lot of the things that I am doing, a lot of the things that I have set up, a lot of the things that I have created. And one of the things that's pretty awesome about this is when you, once again, you don't have to have 30, you don't even have to have 10. Two, three, four, five businesses is plenty, plenty. Because let me go ahead and just tell you, I'm going to sharpen down this media company. I'm gonna tighten up the online course business. I'm gonna tighten up an agency that I'm gonna create and I'm going to tighten up the YouTube business. So there, there's a lot of things that are going to happen in literally, uh, this is the seventh month of the year. So from this month to December, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. We're going to be shaping it up because one of the things that I have found out from personal experience is when you start multiple companies in the right structure, that puts just more cash on the table. And one of the things that happens, and this is an agreement that I had with my business partner. I was like, hey, I'm just thinking about selling sleigh beds on Craigslist. And I kind of want this just to be my own thing because I'll advertise it, I'll just manage it. And my, my business partner was like, cool. So all of that money was mine. And that's how I went from 20,000 per month to $40,000 per month because we were having this partnership. and. As I get smarter and smarter and smarter with the alignment, with the setup of the business partnership that I have with myself and creating multiple businesses, it just adds more and more cash because like I said, um, there are more and more things that I'm getting ready to do. There are more and more things that I'm getting ready to set up and because I have this holding company concept in my mind, this frees me and sets things up for me to create multiple businesses. I'm not going to try to be like Johnson and Johnson, which has like 257 businesses that that's, that's beyond my scope at the moment. I think it was beyond the scope of the founders of Johnson and Johnson. They just got, bigger, better, bolder, deafer. And this is one of the reasons that um, you can make a lot of money once you understand the holding company concept. Because the first thing is that first business has to be up and running and making money with the least amount of effort possible from you. You cannot be knee deep in two different businesses. That's just not. So essentially you want to have that first business as mostly automated or managed or set up where you can have plenty of free time to invest yourself in a second business. And that right there takes a lot. Now in the age of technology, there are so many things that you can create. There are so many things that you can leverage. There are so many things that you can do to set yourself up 
to go ahead and present and put yourself in a position where you can win. Because the holding company concept, once you go ahead and begin to practice it and to set it up, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It is really an amazing concept. It's an amazing thing that you can put together and create your own destiny. It's an amazing, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But the key concept that you must take away from this conversation is once you start a holding company, and this is one of the things that I teach, is you, you set up the holding company first and you set up the operating company. And let's just go ahead and say you set that up and you don't open up another business for two or three years. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. You, it just gives you the setup. It gives you the operation. It gives you the license. It gives you the organizational structure to launch more than one business and to manage more than one business. Because let's go ahead and look at a business that I got into, uh, the car rental business. If I did not have my other businesses pretty much handled, there was no way that I could have gotten in the car rental business, even though I had a hired employee. It, it was just because that was really, really very deep. And I knew that once I started that second business, I knew from a personal standpoint that it was going to take a lot to get it up and running into making money. But that's the gist of the holding company situation. Once you get into the holding company situation, and this is one of the things that I'm trying to train people, I'm trying to reach as many people as possible to set up that holding company first. And one of the things I come across is I have a lot of people who are uncertain of their next steps that they should take. And one of the things I want to train them is, you know, if you have a company that's already in operation and is setting up, there are certain steps and sequences that you should take before setting up your holding company. And this is one of the things I discuss in the training. Because once you go ahead and do this, once you set this up, this creates a boatload of cash creates a lot of cash. I mean, I want you to think in 2020, I spent $200,000 in one month on cars. And the next month I had that money back again. And that's the power of a holding company. Once you understand the organization, the setup and the situation. So if you want to be part of this, because I'm getting ready to make some big, big changes. Um, in the intellectual property school, I'm teaching you how to set up a holding company and I'm teaching you how to do YouTube channels. I'm, there's a whole lot. And if you want to be part of that situation, go below and hit the application. And once you hit the application, if we come to a, ter a certain terms of agreement, then one of the things that we'll do is you will get scheduled a call where we can discuss how the holding company, the intellectual property situation will just be a better fit for you once you go ahead and make that decision to embark and to set yourself on that path where you're just not going to be a regular person. And one again, this is July and we have a new situation. You must go through the application process first before you get into the holding, the intellectual property school where we have a lot of things that are going down. So that link is below. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next episode of I Eat Fire. I really like that name. I really do.